Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about balance of reciprocating mass. Now the balancing of reciprocating parts in any machine or in a system is done by balancing the unbalanced forces which produce the disturbing effect on the system and the balancing is done by introducing a counter mass in such a way that either it eliminates the complete imbalance or controls or balances a part of the imbalance produced in the system. So there are various applications where moving parts have reciprocating motion such as an IC engine, air compressors and many more where the system undergoes acceleration and deacceleration continuously. And this continuous acceleration and deacceleration it produces dynamic inertia forces. Now we know that the direction of inertia force is always in the direction of opposite to that of the acceleration. So if this is the direction of acceleration, inertia force will act opposite to it. And if this is the direction of acceleration, inertia force will act opposite to this direction. So because the inertia force is dynamically changing, it is a dynamic force as it is acting opposite to the acceleration which is also changing its direction. Therefore, to balance this inertia force, this dynamic inertia force is very important in order to ensure that the system moves smoothly without any vibrations or hindrances, right? So, understand the balancing of reciprocating parts, we have taken the case of a single slider crank mechanism. Now, this single slider crank mechanism, it has got four parts, frame or the cylinder, which we are denoting by link one, crank which is link 2, connecting rod which we are denoting by link 3 and the reciprocating piston which is denoted by link 4. Now in order for the system to work without imbalances it is important that frame is stationary. So we know that frame should be stationary, crank should have purely rotational motion, the piston should have purely translation or reciprocating motion and the connecting rod it has got a bit complex motion because it is a combination of reciprocating and rotating motion. So connecting rod is converted to a dynamically equivalent system while doing the analysis, right? So we already know this, we have already derived the acceleration of reciprocating parts or the acceleration of piston while doing the dynamic force analysis. Right? And we know the acceleration is equal to r omega square cos theta plus cos 2 theta upon n, where theta is the angle made by crank with the line of stroke, r is the length of the crank, omega is the angular speed with which crank is rotating, right? And n is what? n is the ratio which is L upon r. L is the length of connecting rod and r is the length of the crank. So if this is the force, if this is the acceleration forces what mass into acceleration let's say the mass of the reciprocating parts be denoted by small m so force becomes m r omega square cos theta plus cos 2 theta upon n now if we break this equation in two parts it will be m r omega square cos theta plus m r omega square cos 2 theta upon n and we have named these two forces as primary accelerating force and secondary accelerating force. Now, the maximum value of this primary force is m r omega square and the maximum value of secondary accelerating force is m r omega square upon n. And if we plot a graph for the force and time, we see that the primary accelerating force, it is twice, it is maximum twice, which is at 0 degree and 180 degree, whereas the secondary accelerating force which we are denoting by the red graph it is maximum four times in the system or in a complete rotation of crank which is at 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree and 360 degree and you also see that the maximum value of secondary accelerating force is actually one nth time of the primary accelerating force which means that in most of the systems n is much much larger than one right therefore this value tends to be much lesser in comparison to primary accelerating force therefore 
for further analysis we do not take secondary accelerating force into account and we proceed further with the primary accelerating force now see in a slider crack mechanism if primary accelerating force that means whenever this slider is rotating right so what is happening the piston is doing the translatory motion and for the first half of the stroke this primary accelerating force which is mr omega square is in this direction that means the inertia force will act in the direction opposite to that of it which is mr omega magnitude remains the same so it is mr omega square cos theta now we'll draw the free body diagrams of all the components and see what all forces are acting on them and we already know the conditions for the static balancing of systems with two forces with three forces with two forces and a torque right so if we talk about crank which is the link 2 it has got a torque acting in anti clockwise direction so to balance the stock there should be forces acting on it in such a way that they produce a torque in clockwise direction which is equal and opposite to the already existing applied torque so we have two forces which is f12 that means force applied on body 2 because of one which is the frame and force applied on body 2 because of the connecting rod so these two forces are equal and opposite right and now these are what these are the constraint forces which are the action reaction forces these forces they do exist in couple and if we talk about the combined effect of these forces it is zero because they are equal and opposite they nullify each other so in connecting rod we have got f23 which is equal and opposite to f32 so f32 means force applied on body 3 because of body 2 or link 3 because of link 2 and it has got force f43 which is equal and opposite to f23 and also because this is a constraint force so the pair of this f43 is f34 which is acting on this reciprocating piston right so if we look at this piston this piston has got three forces one is f14 the force because of the support or the frame and the another pair of this f14 is lying here which is f41 it is the force acting on the frame or the link 1 because of link 4 or the piston and it has also got an external force which is mr omega square cos theta which is the primary accelerating force and equal and opposite forces the inertia force now see i already told you that for the system to be unbalanced and for system or the machine to work efficiently the forces the unbalanced forces on support should be zero but in this case we see there are two forces acting on the system one is f41 which is the force on the frame because of the piston and the other one is f21 a part of which is acting on the crank and the one part of the pair which is f21 force acting on one which is the frame because of crank that is link 2 is in this direction now if we resolve this forces we will see that it has got two components the vertical component which is f21 vertical and a horizontal component which is f21 horizontal now the function or the effect of this f21 horizontal force which is also called as the shaking force that it produces balance in the horizontal line of action of the system so it produces a shaking force in the system in this line along the axis of motion along the line of action and this force which is f21 vertical and f41 these forces are equal and opposite so these forces they nullify the effect of each other but because these forces they do not act along the same line of action what they produce they produce a shaking couple the effect of which is to produce oscillating or a vibrating couple in the system so what we are concerned with we are concerned with this force f21 horizontal because this force is not getting balanced in the system even though there is a shaking couple but we are more concerned about this shaking force as it produces shaking uh, linear vibration in the horizontal direction 
So what we can do to balance this is if this is the let's say this is the crank, this is the crank pin. What we do while balancing the rotating masses, we use a counter mass equal and opposite along the same line of action of the rotating mass. Similarly, because crank is a rotating mass, we add a counter mass at a distance r because the length of the crank is r. So at a distance r opposite to the crank in such a way that it balances the system. So if, if the mass of the crank pin is m, let's suppose, so we are adding a counter mass m. So the centrifugal acting is it is producing a force which is mr omega square. And if we resolve this mr omega square in two components, if this distance is, th sorry, if this angle is theta, so this component, the horizontal one becomes mr omega square cos theta and the vertical component becomes mr omega square sin theta. Now, if you see this mr omega square cos theta will actually balance the unbalanced mr omega square cos theta produced because of the reciprocating masses. So one of the problem is solved that the horizontal force or the shaking force is balanced. But in order to resolve one problem, we have created another problem. And this problem is this vertical force mr omega square sine theta. Now see, because this is a sine dependent factor, it will be minimum at 0 and 180 degree. And what will happen when theta is 90 degree? That means at at this position it will be maximum so this value will become mr omega square so what will happen instead of moving down or sliding to and fro this force will tend to move the system upward right it will try to pull it upward and in this position it will try to pull it downward so it will produce or it will make the system jump up and down which is obviously not wanted or not desirable so what we do we make a compromise what is the compromise instead of balancing the complete shaking force we balance a part of it we let a small imbalance left because of the reciprocating parts in the system in order to reduce this vertical force because if those this force is of high value it will take the system off the frame or it will make the system vibrate up and down right so we make a compromise and we say that a factor or a part of the reciprocating masses is balanced by a certain factor and that factor is denoted by c the range of this c uh, is from like half to three by fourth so the primary forces which are balanced will be a part of the unbalanced force which is cmr omega square cos theta so what is the primary force which is left unbalanced it is 1 minus c m r omega square cos theta and the vertical component so what happens this force becomes c m r omega square because the mass is same so the vertical force which is left in unbalanced is c m r omega square now it is reduced by a certain value and this also becomes c m r omega square so the part which remains unbalanced is total minus this part so it becomes 1 minus c m r omega square cos theta and vertical imbalance is m r omega square c m r omega square sin theta so what is the resultant force resultant unbalanced force because it has got a vertical component and a horizontal component so the resultant unbalanced forces are this force because there is nothing to balance this force and a part of the horizontal forces which remains unbalanced which is this 1 minus c m r omega square cos theta so we can find the resultant of these two forces and that will give us the value of the total unbalanced force and the resultant of the unbalanced forces is minimum when c is half or 1 by 2 that means when we are balancing half of the unbalanced reciprocating masses the resultant unbalanced forces are the minimum.